All right, good morning. Uh, my name is Cole Real over here at the Greater Manchester Chamber. Thank you all for joining us uh, to learn more about the state's paid family medical leave uh, program. So I am going to turn it over to our friends uh, and we'll get started and we'll all have a very informative morning learning more about the program. And then we'll have some time for any questions that arise. So I'm gonna turn it over um, to DJ uh, to take it away. So DJ, if you like, go. You know, you'd think by now I would remember to take myself off mute, but alas, I'll just blame it on an early morning, I guess. Uh, thanks so much, Cole. Uh, my name is DJ Betancourt. I have the pleasure of serving as the commissioner of the New Hampshire Department of Insurance. I'm joined by my colleague, Rich Lavers, who's the deputy commissioner of the New Hampshire Department of Employment Security. And it is great to see so many people join us this morning to uh, hear about a program that is near and dear to our hearts, the Grand Estate Paid Family and Medical Leave Program. Uh, Rich has some slides that are going to give you all the really neat information and the numbers of how the program is doing so far. But I thought that I might uh, give a little bit of the history of the program. And Rich and I both appreciate the fact that this conversation is coming at an opportune time since so many of you are probably either well into or beginning the process of considering uh, what your benefit designs for 2024 are going to look like. And hopefully we can convince you to take a serious look at this program and make it part of uh, your offerings. But in a previous life, I actually served in the New Hampshire legislature. And in my first term, which spanned the years of 2005 and 2006, it was the second time that the legislature had brought forward the concept of a paid family leave program. And at that time, there was some consensus that this was a good benefit, that it would provide an enhanced quality of life for people. Uh, but there was absolutely no consensus over how this type of program should be designed. Uh, flash forward to 2017, I'm serving in the governor's office, and now the dynamic has changed a bit, um, where you not only had some consensus around the fact that a paid family leave benefit had intrinsic value in and of itself, but now we were dealing with a highly acute workforce challenge. And so the question really became, is this a benefit? Is this an opportunity for us to help our businesses attract and retain workers? Can this be a tool for us as we're thinking about how we can better enhance uh, our ability to attract workforce. And so for the first time, there was a bit of a consensus amongst the parties in, in the legislature, the governor was on board, and then we got into the nitty gritty of how we defined the program uh, and how we designed that program. And we had the benefit of having seen how other states uh, moved forward with fam paid family leave programs. And we were able to learn from both their successes and their failures. And the result of that was a very unique program. Uh, some other states have since taken up New Hampshire's model with some variations, but New Hampshire truly was the first state that came up with the particular model of having this be a private market voluntary opportunity. Uh, and we did so in unique ways. And we're really pleased at how things have turned out. And so I'll turn it over to Rich to take you through the details and the numbers. And then obviously we're happy to answer any questions you have. Thanks, DJ, and, and good morning to everyone. A great group here this morning. So excited to talk more about the paid family medical leave program. Uh, before we get into some of the program details and then give everyone an, an up-to-date snapshot of how we're doing with enrollment. So seeing how many employers and workers are, are currently covered in these early stages of the program. Just reminding folks that, you know, it's not lost on DJ and myself that we're talking to employers about ways in which they can help facilitate their workers be away from work during a time that where it's an incredibly tight labor market and employers are having a very difficult time um, attracting uh, the necessary workforce that they need. And this is, this is true across all sectors. And you know certain sectors are having a, a harder time than others in terms of regaining the workforce that they had prior to the pandemic. So that, that piece is not lost on us. But when you think about the, the recruitment and the retention challenges that we're facing right now and the uh, change in demands amongst workers, particularly younger workers that we're seeing coming out of the pandemic, 
a much more of a demand for better work-life balance. If you're able to offer your workers um, some peace of mind, knowing that they have a partial wage replacement option through their employer, when life happens, um, you know, whether it be a, a, an injury or an illness um, outside of work, so there's no workers' comp coverage, or we're dealing with caring for a family member, if they have that peace of mind, knowing that they have that type of option through their employer, you know, wow, what a, what a recruitment and retention tool that can be. Um, and if you, you combine it with something affordable um, like that, which is available through the state program and the partnership with MetLife, um, I, th I think we've, we've, we've come up with something that can really help with the unique challenges um, that we're all seeing and experiencing right now. Um, and, you know, and, and DJ and I um, share in those, those challenges because, you know, we're both, um, you know, we're running agencies that need workers as well. Um, so, um, you know, that's not lost on us. Um, so getting into some of the, the program details of what we're um, looking at here with the state's version of paid family medical leave, as DJ had indicated, you know, this is not a, a you know, the, the concept of paid family medical leave is not new. It's not unique to New Hampshire. Uh, but what is unique to New Hampshire is that it is a voluntary program. Um, and when we talk about voluntary, there are many levels of voluntary and flexibility within this program. So first and foremost, employers themselves have the choice of whether or not they want to uh, purchase paid family medical leave for their employees. Uh, so this is something that is available to all New Hampshire employers. Um, if you are currently reporting payroll uh, to New Hampshire, um, your, your tax and wage reporting requirements on a quarterly basis, if you're making those uh, filings with New Hampshire Employment Security, you are a New Hampshire employer. And those workers that you're reporting uh, payroll to New Hampshire are your New Hampshire workers. Those would, those would all be eligible for this coverage. So uh, first and foremost, employers have the choice. Um, it is a um, open enrollment period for employers. So it is uh, with no window of time, employers can enroll at any point. Um, it could be right now, it can, you can wait until 2024, or you could be like some of your other um, colleagues and other organizations in the state that have already enrolled. Um, once an employer uh, makes that decision, say they decide to purchase coverage uh, for their workers, if the employer is covering the full cost of the premium, then your workers are automatically enrolled. If you are covering uh, something less than 100% of the premium and your workers need to contribute to that coverage, then your workers have the option of enrolling in the program. It's a process that would be facilitated by MetLife. We'll learn a little bit more about MetLife as we go. Um, but that's a second level of choice uh, for the workers for which the employer is not covering full cost. Those workers have the option to enroll. Um, and then lastly, there's an individual option in New Hampshire. So in addition to New Hampshire being unique and having a purely voluntary paid family medical leave plan, we also have an individual option where the state is the policyholder through MetLife. Um, MetLife um, bears the risk um, in ensuring that, um, but individuals are actually able to purchase their own policy if their employer does not offer this program or something comparable. So um, those individuals you'll see as we get going, they have a, a limited 60-day uh, open enrollment period each year, but individual workers can enroll on their own uh, without having that coverage secured by their employer. Um, getting you know, a little bit more into the why, um, you know, what we touched upon in my introduction, it's really what individuals are demanding um, right now in terms of as they, they look to make decisions on um, what path they're going to follow. Um, it's really looking for more work-life balance, increased paid time off, uh, better benefits um, is what people are looking for. It does result in better retention. And I do think it is particularly poignant right now as we look at our continued um, 
uh, challenges with regard to labor force participation. Um, and looking at the characteristics of that difficulty is really with younger workers. Um, younger workers are not participating in traditional employment to the extent that they did prior to the pandemic. And why is that? Um, it's not because they're, they're sitting around doing nothing. Um, they are certainly out there and they're out there earning, but they're in non-traditional employment. Something more independent could be gig, something on their own, consulting roles, um, but something that is resulting in not W-2 employment, but 1099 type of compensation. I um, mean, when you try to think about ways that you can attract more people away from that back to W-2 based compensation, you got to look at what they don't currently have. And part of what they don't currently have are a good paid benefit structure. So enhancing what you offer can help with that recruitment piece as we look to attract those younger workers back from their, their current non-traditional type employment. Um, as I indicated, MetLife is the state's partner for New Hampshire paid family medical leave. Um, when the state uh, was uh, first implementing the law as passed um, uh, by the legislature and signed by Governor Sununu, um, we went out for a competitive procurement like the state does on so much of its uh, services um, that it delivers. Um, and MetLife um, was the uh, insurance carrier that earned that business. So um, the state is in a five-year contract with MetLife to be um, the exclusive provider of New Hampshire paid family medical leave. Um, I say that they're exclusive for the New Hampshire paid family medical leave, keeping in mind that other insurance carriers could come into this market and offer a similar product. Um, but the key difference between what MetLife offers and purchasing coverage through MetLife in the state's plan and purchasing similar coverage from another, um, another carrier should they come into the New Hampshire market is that it is only through the MetLife plan that New Hampshire employers are able to take advantage of the BET tax credit. So by purchasing the New Hampshire paid family medical leave through MetLife, employers are eligible to take 50% of the premium that they pay on behalf of their workers and take that as a direct credit against their BET liability. So again, that's only through the MetLife plan. Um, and, and MetLife, again, is the, the carrier that won the business and is partnered with the state um, for at least the next five years. So uh, a good long runway on there on MetLife's demonstrated commitment to the success of the New Hampshire program. Looking at some of the basics about the New Hampshire paid family medical leave. So our base plan is we're talking six weeks of coverage per year. Um, it's 60% wage replacement. Um, that wage replacement is calculated very similar to how um, unemployment benefits are calculated, where we look at the, the, the first four of the most recently completed five calendar quarters. Um, and then that is how um, wages are determined, and then the 60% replacement is determined. Um, we, we have the BET tax credit, as I just had mentioned, available to the employer for that portion of the premium they are paying on behalf of their workers. And this can be something that employers stack on an existing short-term disability um, program that they have. And I have a good example to talk about there with how that can impact pricing when we get uh, to that section. Um, other options, just demonstrating the flexibility of the New Hampshire program. Um, so the uh, premium funding employers can be paying, like I said, 100% of that premium. Um, the overwhelming majority of employers that have purchased coverage are doing that. Uh, they are covering the full cost of premium. Um, but you can share that cost with your workers as well. Um, you can also stack this up to 12 weeks of uh, available coverage, so to align better um, with uh, federal FMLA, if, if you are subject to federal FMLA. Um, and then also you can look at stacking on the wage replacement rate um, and getting up to 100% wage replacement um, if that is something that you feel is uh, more appropriate and uh, will make you more competitive um, uh, and where the workforce you're trying to attract. Now, the, that other unique feature, the individual plan option that I had mentioned. Um, so, New Hampshire has the option for individual workers. You got to, you have to be working in New Hampshire um, to purchase coverage on their own. Um, we have a, an annual 
open enrollment period. Um, and I bring this up with employers because you may have to um, um, engage with MetLife, even if you're not purchasing coverage for your workers, you might have to, your HR section might need to be talking with MetLife about an individual that purchases coverage. Um, so you'll, you'll know a little bit more about that. Um, so starting December 1st, we have our 2024 open enrollment period for individuals. So again, if the individual worker does not have New Hampshire paid family medical leave coverage through their employer, either 100% employer paid or partial employer paid, if they don't have that and the employer is not providing something comparable to the coverage available with the New Hampshire paid family medical leave uh, coverage, Comparable coverage, we're looking at something that provides at least six weeks um, of leave per year at 60% wage replacement, at least 60% wage replacement, and covers all of the qualifying events that we'll get to on a subsequent slide. That is how you demonstrate whether you're something comparable. So the individual worker that doesn't have access to that, they're able to go in the 60-day open enrollment period starting this December and, and purchase coverage on their own. The state is the policy holder. The individual gets a certificate of coverage. Uh, that gets them their base plan. It gets them six weeks uh, at 60% wage replacement. Um, leave can be taken um, all at once. It can be, can be taken um, intermittently. Um, there is a, a, a single unpaid uh, waiting week uh, prior to benefits paying. And the individuals do have a seven month waiting period. Um, so they, they have seven months from when they purchase the product um, and they need to pay premium. Um, and it's seven months and it's that eight mo eighth month that they can file a claim. Um, that really is to, to help, uh, um, help with the solvency of the individual plan. It, it allows the individual to essentially make their copay um, on the coverage. Um, and the individual coverage is capped at $5 per week for premium. That is something that is set in statute. Um, so individuals can pay less, but they can pay no more than that $5 a week for that base coverage. Now, qualifying events. Um, so, uh, we know, um, we're probably familiar with a lot of this with, with perhaps other states that you might have um, employees in. Uh, that have paid family medical leave. But what we're talking about is for first person coverage, it's that non-work related illness injury, similar to what is covered under a, a short term disability plan. Um, but in addition to that first person coverage, uh, we also have bonding leave and family caregiver leave. So that bonding leave is for your worker to be able to spend time with a newly adopted child, a newborn child, um, and they're able to take that leave during the first year following birth or adoption. Um, and then also on the family side, we have family caregiver leave. So again, leave that would be available for your worker to take care of a family member. And we have uh, the family member definition is called out here on the slide. A quite expansive uh, definition of family member for the New Hampshire plan. Um, but they're able to take leave in order to provide care when a qualifying family member has a, a, has a serious health condition. Um, so those family members, um, they're able, you're able to go uh, lateral uh, to your employee, to their spouse, um, and then you're able to go north and south. So they're able to take the leave to, uh, take, uh, to provide care for a child uh, they're able to uh, take leave to provide care for a parent or grandparent. Um, so that's essentially the, the, um, the world of uh, family that we're talking about, that your um, uh, worker would be able to take leave under this program to provide some of that care. Um, and in addition to those, we also have a military component. So if your worker has a family member um, that is in the military and are, uh, get um, orders for uh, deployment, your, uh, your worker would be able to take leave to help that individual prepare. Um, and then also when your worker's family member who is in the military had that um, active duty deployment, when they return, if they have caregiving needs as a result of that deployment, your worker would be able to take this leave to provide that care. Um, so, um, you know, uh, quite a comprehensive uh, set of qualifying events. Um, that can trigger um, coverage and trigger um, your worker needing to be out. Um, when we talk about employer responsibilities and uh, a distinction, we have a distinction between what large and small employers 
are, um, are required to do by the law. So large employers uh, for purposes of this program are 50 or more New Hampshire workers. So again, that's, that's just your New Hampshire workers. So the workers that are being reported to New Hampshire for payroll purposes on that quarterly tax and wage report, that's who we're talking about. And then smaller employers are fewer than 50. So your large employers, if you're participating um, in an employer-sponsored plan or you have individuals that are purchasing individual coverage, um, larger employers are required to collect that premium through payroll deduction and, and move that on to MetLife. Um, that's a requirement for those larger employers. Smaller employers do not have that similar requirement. They can submit premium through payroll deduction, but they're not required. So they can, they can work out other payment arrangements with MetLife um, in those situations. Now, um, larger employers very uh, likely uh, will be subject to the job restoration and, and job protection provisions in the Federal Family Medical Leave Act. Now, the New Hampshire program doesn't do anything to add to those responsibilities. So if you are an employer that currently hits those thresholds and you trigger the requirements under federal FMLA in terms of job restoration, um, you would continue to have that. Um, and if you don't, if you're a smaller employer um, and you don't hit those triggers for federal FMLA, this program does not put those requirements on you. So New Hampshire Paid Family Medical Leave does not impose any additional requirements with regard to job protection, but obviously those existing requirements from the Federal Family Medical Leave Act, if you trigger those, those continue to be in place um, and would, and would con continue to be in play for purposes of this program. Um, employers, we're really, you know, we're encouraging all employers um, to really educate themselves, take a, take, a, take a look at what this program is about um, and look at sponsoring coverage for their workers um, taking into consideration the uh, impact uh, that the BET tax credit can have with cost savings um, and um, reminding employers that you're going to you're going to be addressing questions from your workers um, what either whether you uh, sponsor coverage um, and they they have questions or if you don't sponsor coverage they could be coming in with questions with an individual plan um, and employers will need to participate with MetLife in either of those scenarios in the claim filing process as MetLife will need information with regard to other benefits that the individual might have, other leave, um, their, their current schedules, and then would be coordinating with the employer when a claim is filed and, and coordinating with the employer on that return to work date. Now, costs, costs of coverage. Um, so um, obviously, with all of the flexibilities that we have talked about here with what employers can do in terms of stacking onto the base plan, all of that um, goes into uh, takes is into consideration in terms of cost. Um, and, you know, um, similar to um, your experience with uh, getting quotes and costing out perhaps a short term disability product, that's the type of information um, that MetLife needs in order to provide quotes. Um, so it's really your uh, the uh, employee census that you used for your short-term disability coverage. Um, and then, you know, they're going to look at, you know, what type of or what level of contribution is the employer making um, to the premium? Um, what sector um, are you uh, a part of in terms of the, the type of business that you are engaged in? And, you know, the demographics of your workforce. So all of those um, get calculated in each policy for employer sponsored coverage is individually underwritten based upon those the set of factors and choices that an employer makes. Um, and you're able to um, go through that quoting process and learn a little bit more about how affordable this is um, and, and how it compares to other types of coverage using the MetLife quote calculator that can be accessed both off the uh, state website at paidleave.nh.gov and by clicking through to the MetLife website as well. Um, so, um, you know, very easy quoting process that folks can um, participate in in order to determine whether this is something that they think is going to be right for their organization. Um, some um, um, experiences that uh, I've um, listened to have been shared by other employers. Um, 
you know, I, I listened to Val Zanchuk, uh, owner of Graphicast over in Jaffray, a small uh, manufacturer over in the, the Monadnock region. Uh, he talked a little bit about uh, on a BIA meeting last week um, about his experience. Um, he had looked at this product right when it came out. He had uh, um, received some quotes from MetLife. So 25 uh, employee organization. He was looking at about a $5,000 cost uh, for uh, paid family medical leave. Um, he then evaluated whether or not he wanted to keep, he had an existing short-term disability policy that was linked with his life insurance coverage for, for his employees. Um, he needed to keep his short-term disability in order to, to keep his rates for um, what he saw as a very valuable uh, life policy. So he kept a short-term disability policy. Uh, MetLife then discounted his New Hampshire paid family medical leave quote by 40%, 40. Um, so it brought his $5,000 quote down to three per year for 25 employees um, within the manufacturing space. Um, and he then took into consideration his 50% uh, BET tax credit because he was paying 100% of premium. And it brought his net cost down to 1500 bucks. Um, for six weeks, 60% wage replacement for all of these qualifying events for all 25 of his employees. Um, so it really, it turned into what he described as a no brainer um, with his experience and, you know, resulted in him in purchasing coverage. Um, so, you know, we, we can't say enough about that, the value of that BET credit. Um, and when, uh, if, you know, those employers that do purchase coverage and pay for premium on behalf of their workers, um, in order to claim that credit, you're going to see it right on the same Department of Revenue Administration tax form that you currently use with regard to your BET. Um, you know, there's there's a, a host of existing BET credits. Uh, this will be on that same list. Um, so you'll take credit for that when you're um, uh, filing with DRA. It'll be right there, easy to use. Um, and again, it's 50% of all of the premium you pay on behalf of your workers that can be taken against your BET liability. Um, I'll, I'll skip through enrollment and claims processing. The, the real keys there are it's all through MetLife. Um, and um, we'll get into some numbers. Um, so, so we've been up, uh, up and running for all of 2023. Um, it feels like a long period of time, really short uh, period of time when you're talking about a brand new product, first of its kind in the country and doing a lot of educating and making people understand uh, what's available to them. Um, so what we've seen from employers so far is we've had 213 employers purchase coverage across all sectors in the state. That coverage um, covers uh, or makes paid family medical leave available to about 13,000 workers. Um, the state as an employer has also purchased coverage on behalf of the uh, executive branch employees, um, all of those that are all those folks that are working for state agencies. That adds about another 8,500 workers. And then with our individual pool, it brings us up to about 22,000 workers in New Hampshire that have access to paid family medical leave just in the first, uh, this is through July, so the first seven months of the existence of this program. Um, pretty pretty uh, impressive numbers right out of the gate that we hope to continue to grow. Um, what we've seen is it's, it's overwhelmingly small businesses that are purchasing coverage. I'll get into some percentages in a, in a further slide. And the majority of employers are fully paying the cost of the premium. Um, and interestingly, and as one would expect with the overwhelming majority of employers being smaller, meaning less than 50 New Hampshire workers, what we're seeing is that the majority of those employers did not have any pre-existing comparable coverage. So unlike that example uh, from Val and Graphicast and Jaffrey, um, where he did have a, a, a pre-existing short-term disability product for his workers, most of the employers did not have um, a short-term disability product in place previously. So this is first of its kind coverage uh, for those employers and for their workers. Um, on the individual side with the individual option, we did have our first annual enrollment back in January of this year. Uh, we saw 565 individual workers enroll. Um, and what we know about that group is that it is overwhelmingly female and also very young. 
So um, 80% or nearly 80% of those 565 individual workers are women and 63% are under the age of 45. Um, so again, in order for them to get into this individual pool, they couldn't have comparable coverage available to them. So majority women, majority young women, um, I think we can probably all figure out why they're securing this coverage. And it's really for, you know, plans to start a family. Um, and that coverage was not available to them prior to this program um, being in existence. So a real life changer uh, for those individuals. And uh, we're, we're doing a lot with marketing of the individual option as we go uh, through the rest of 2023 and get up to that December 1st open enrollment uh, date. Um, you know, we just spent the weekend at uh, the Glendy uh, Greek Festival down in Manchester talking with anyone who wanted to spend time while they're waiting for uh, waiting in line for food. Um, talk to them about um, this individual option. Uh, we've been at, uh, you know, Fisher Cats games this summer, just trying to be out there and help create awareness um, with folks and knowing that this is something that's available to them if their employer isn't purchasing it. Um, and so some of those highlights. Um, so the the percentage of small businesses of that we're talking about here, eighty three percent of these employer sponsored policies are small New Hampshire businesses. So under 50 New Hampshire workers, almost 70 percent of them are fully covering the full premium. So 100 percent employer paid and then 60 percent did not offer anything comparable prior to securing New Hampshire paid family medical leave coverage for their workers. And then, like I had said, that individual group, um, overwhelmingly female and majority young. Uh, so, you know, that's our experience thus far. Um, and then where where folks can learn more about um, this uh, program um, is, you know, go to our state website, paidleave.nh.gov. We're on all of the social media platforms. And then we're, we're trying to get out and talk to any and, and all groups that we can. So both virtually like this and in person as well, um, trying to get out to chambers and, and trade associations. Uh, yesterday, I was talking to um, uh, Mike Summers and the, the board at New Hampshire Lodging and Restaurant Association. Uh, last week, uh, we were talking to the Monadnock Sherm Group um, at a restaurant over in Keene. Um, and, you know, we've been um, up in uh, Berlin talking with employers, been over on the seacoast um, in all parts of the state. And we're just trying to make sure we can get out and talk to as many groups as we can, really just to make sure they're aware. So if there's another group uh, that you are involved that you think would find this information useful, um, you have information here on how to go about arranging for either myself or DJ or Cassie Keene, uh, the deputy commissioner over at the Department of uh, Administrative Services, who is a, a co-partner with, with, with operationalizing this program. Um, any one of us can come out, talk to your group, um, and help people understand more about what's available to them. Um, so with that, I will um, uh, stop the share. We will make sure to um, make this available uh, to folks that are, are on today's uh, program. And, um, you know, with that, I'd like to just turn it over um, for folks if they, they have any questions for either DJ or myself. If folks have questions, feel free to uh, unmute or write it in the chat. I did get one question during the presentation about what is the BET, uh, but you did go over that later on, Rich. <laughs> All right, I think we have we have a question from Sharon in the chat. Um, when you say comparable, do you mean in coverage, cost, or kind of a combination of those? Uh, so, so just coverage. Um, so if you have a worker that signs up for the individual coverage, uh, what MetLife will then do is they'll provide you with a uh, form uh, for you to review and check off what you have and perhaps don't have. Uh, to determine whether or not your existing coverage is comparable to what the New Hampshire Paid Family Medical Leave Program offers. So essentially that form will have you confirm whether or not 
you provide at least six weeks of leave per year, whether you provide at least 60% wage replacement uh, for those six weeks, and then they'll go through those qualifying events with um, the uh, first person um, non-work related illness injury, bonding, caregiver leave, and military leave. They'll go through those. You'll check off whether you have those or you don't. And then if you are meeting those uh, base coverages, you would be considered to have a comparable plan and the individual would then be redirected to your plan. Um, they wouldn't be eligible to purchase the individual uh, program because they would already have coverage or comparable coverage available through their employer. Uh, so that would be a process that MetLife works with each employer when an individual uh, starts the enrollment process. I would just add to that from an insurance perspective. You know, it's interesting because when we launched this program, we wondered what would happen to the short-term disability market. We wondered whether or not this product would kind of supplant that. And as Rich described, I've been pleasantly surprised that uh, it has not, that people have used the program to supplement what they currently have, but they've held on to their current uh, short-term disability provider because they've got a long-term relationship and that's working for them. And as again, as Rich mentioned, you can bring the, the family aspect of that uh, to your benefits design while keeping your existing coverage and the cost to add this enhancement uh, is really, really affordable. So, so that's great. And then the other thing that Rich mentioned, again, from kind of an insurance perspective, is there is not, to my knowledge, and any time an insurance product is filed in New Hampshire, it comes through my department. There is not a, a, another a carrier in the state of New Hampshire that's offering this particular type of coverage. Uh, I am aware of one private market um, uh, offering that has just the, the family aspect of it, but not the personal aspect of it. So this program provides both of those pieces. Uh, so that's a real advantage to this program. In addition to the tax credit component, which I would highlight, you know, for some of you, you may very well have been self-funding a paid family leave benefit um, in, in order to be competitive with workforce. And again, as Rich mentioned, you know, the expectations of this generation of worker is, is different, uh, certainly different um, pre and post pandemic. And so they're, they're looking for this kind of offering. So for those of you who might have been self-funding uh, this type of coverage, now you have the opportunity to take advantage of the state program, which is going to bring down your overall cost of doing that. Not seeing any other questions in the chat. We'll give folks a quick moment here. All right, a follow-up question from Sharon. Uh, would this program require employees to use all vacation or sick time first, um, where SD and LTD requires it? Uh, so on the employer-sponsored coverage, that's up to the, that's up to the employer. Uh, so when the employer is setting up their coverage, they can determine what they want to require to, to pay first um, or and types of leave to be used first. Um, the only requirement is that your um, any other uh, short-term disability product is required to pay before the, the um, individual component of New Hampshire paid family medical leave. On the individual side, um, individuals would be required to utilize existing uh, PTO that is available to them for this type of leave. However, they they would be allowed to keep uh, one full week of PTO or available leave prior to then uh, being able to go on to um, New Hampshire paid family medical leave. So again, that's that's on the individual side if they're purchasing coverage when their employer doesn't offer it. But the employer sponsored coverage, employers can decide what they how they want to structure that. And just to build off of that, you know, as you work with MetLife to coordinate those benefits, uh, it, it may very well play a factor into the quote that you're going to get for the cost of that coverage. Great. I see another question from Sharon in the chat there, um, which we will share the contact information if any other questions come up for Sharon or others, but just quickly, uh, just a little bit of a clarification on would this supplement current, current short-term and long-term uh, disability payments? Uh, yeah. 
Um, again, the employers can structure it. Um, you know, they can they can keep whatever existing coverage they want, um, and then structure this to pay. Um, um, you know, at you know whether they go with the base plan or they go with something greater. Um, it, it we do have the requirement in law that any existing short term disability is required to be paid prior to that first person coverage being triggered under this again. So that's for the existing short term disability. Um, but um, you can stack up the level of benefit um, that you have in your plan when you purchase that from from MetLife, you know, and as you're you're kind of setting things up and tweaking what you want for your coverage, all of that will factor into overall cost. Uh, but employers can stack that um, amount of wage replacement uh, for the benefit that they get through um, the paid family medical leave program. Great. Seeing no other questions, uh, we will be sharing contact information if any other questions arise, as well as the slide deck um, and recording. So thank you all for joining us this morning. I think everyone learned at least one new thing uh, throughout this time and look forward to uh, helping to spread the word throughout to the business community here uh, in our region about uh, this offering from the state. So thank you both for your time. Very welcome. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.